Hey, um, I was just wondering if you could help me with a question I had. Um, I got your number at the Kingdom Hall. The King Hall, yes. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. I was confused. I thought they were giving a number that you could call or whatever. So, um, well, yeah. Do you well, have? Do you yeah. have? No, I'm not. I'm not at the Kingdom Hall, but you're calling. Somebody can answer the phone. Oh, okay. So you're good. Okay. okay, that's why. Yeah, I guess that's why they gave it. Okay. Um, I just have a question. Do you have a minute? Yes. Yes. Well, um, I've been reading some things on the website JW Org that some Jehovah Witnesses told me about. Um, so mm -hmm. reading some of the publications. Um, I'm just not sure, um, you know, most people, I guess most traditional Christians or whatever, that's my background, um, think yeah. of the gospel, the good news, as how to have your sins forgiven, how to be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, um, like, it's a little confusing to me because it seems like um, there's two different ways, like, for the two groups. Because those witnesses, I was trying to talk to them about um, verses that mostly Christians use about um, salvation and be, be, becoming in Christ by trusting in him, mm -hmm. by believing mm -hmm. in the gospel, which is his death for mm -hmm. the forgiveness of sins and his resurrection. Um, yeah. But they said they were saying um, to... Some of them, they only apply to the other people. You mean as far as two groups? Is that what you're Yeah, yeah. About? They only apply to the other class or whatever it is. I never, I never heard of that. Um, right. So, and and that, that basically centers around Revelation, uh, the 14th chapter, uh, which talks, 7 to 14, talks about 144,000 chosen uh, that... Uh, so basically, we focus on two groups: uh, those of the heavenly calling, and um, those that would have uh, an earthly uh, opportunity to serve God forever, to okay. avail themselves. And, and both groups only are able to do that because of the value of Jesus Christ's ransom. Right, but I guess my question is: um, if you're in the other group. Um, then okay. what is the, we, I guess Christians usually call it the, the plan of salvation, or um, how can you be reconciled to God and have eternal life? I'm, that's what I'm kind of confused, like trying to, um, where is that well, spelled out in the Bible for this other group? Well, uh, it really just basically uh, comes down like to John 17, um, 17, this is everlasting life taking in knowledge of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. So uh, salvation really comes from obedience to God uh, through His Son. And oh. that obedience really is um, by applying what the Bible has to say. It really says uh, a lot, though, you know. Yeah, that means a lot. I mean, what it, I mean it, the Bible says a lot that... I mean, do you think everything um, in the New Testament, like it tells Christians to do, is how to become saved? Or is it for Christians who already are born again? That's what's oh, confusing think, I, to me. No, I think it definitely, the, the, it's showing how, oh. you know, we can get, get saved. I mean, it's not for people uh, that, you know, when Jesus Christ was here upon earth, um, he taught people that, you know, had no relationship to uh, as far as a, uh, understanding of, a, of what was really taking place. Um, and he actually, uh, you know, talked about himself getting resurrected, uh, you know, returning to heaven and be with his father. But then the, at the same token, when he was the one that said, I, owe this, I have other sheep which are not of this soul. So... He was the, really the basis, and uh, when uh, when the apostles after him preached for a period of time, they preached only to um, the Jewish people, and so it was uh, a later period of time that uh, God basically directed, or Jesus directed, that there be preaching done to uh, the Gentiles, so they, which were... Uh, as a whole, it had been mostly non-believers, and um, because the Jewish people, they were, they had 
a strict regimen as far as who could be saved, uh, who could come to know God. Uh, so uh, one of the things was they required circumcision. If you wasn't circumcised, you couldn't, uh, you know, have an approved standing before God. And uh, so the apostles kind of showed that, you know, that wasn't necessary, uh, a physical certain that Jesus Christ was, you know, the, the, the root, the medium, uh, not physical uh, circumcision. So uh, just little things. But basically, yes, I'm saying that the, the Greek scriptures is, and really the whole Bible is for people who want to come back uh, into a relationship with God. Because the principles that was established, uh, even in, you know, when Moses, uh, was leaving the Israelites was obedience to God. When they was obedient, they were obedient to God, they were blessed. When they was disobedient, you know, they suffered. Uh, so the principles, uh, was in the Bible or all the way from Genesis to Revelation relate to people that, uh, getting to know God and getting into a you know, an approved relationship with him. Uh, like I say, the, the scripture, you know, this means everlasting life, taking the knowledge of God. And uh, not meaning everlasting life in heaven, uh, everlasting life, you know, it could be in heaven for a limited number, but... Uh, I guess, I also... guess to me, when I'm, um, when I think about what you're saying... Um, I would feel like always very uncertain if I'm in approved relationship with God, approved standing. Um, Because because of what it says in Romans 3. Have you ever read that? It says, um, as it is written, there's none righteous, not even one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they become useless. There's none mm-hmm. who does good, not even one. Yeah. And then you go down and yeah. it talks about that the purpose of the law was the knowledge of sin, not to become justified. And it says that now we have a different mm-hmm. kind of righteousness. In Romans, it's called the righteousness of God. It says in verse 22, mm-hmm. even the righteousness mm-hmm. of God through faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, mm-hmm. being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption mm-hmm. which is in Christ Jesus. And now right. what you're describing, what you just described was very different than that. You were kind of describing almost a lifelong type of probation. Um, you you're kind of seem to be saying that all that Christ did was just to give us a chance to now do good works, to earn salvation. It says um, in verse 27, Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. Which is, it's talking about in Romans and other places that it's totally different than the old covenant in that Mm -hmm. way. So could you ever have assurance of salvation in that system? That you're just you just described to me. How would I have insurance? I don't know. I don't. I don't think you could ever. Okay. I mean, ever get to the point where you were was assured? Oh. Um, because because it's you know it's a judging situation mm-hmm. uh, that's taken basically as in the hand of God and His Son Jesus Christ. So we're, so we're never going to get when it talks get to about the point we say, um, justification, uh-huh. being justified declared righteous Mm -hmm. do you think that's on the Mm -hmm. basis of you know how you've done your whole life and you might be justified or does the bible talk about having been justified and that we have forgiveness of sins this is this is my favorite verse here on assurance Mm -hmm. first john Mm -hmm. 5 13 it says Mm -hmm. these things i have written to you who believe in the name of the son of god so that you may know that you have eternal life so mm-hmm. how does that fit in with what you're saying well I, i'm just saying that until a person completes his life mm-hmm. my feeling is until you completely your life whether it should be 
uh, you know, we believe that, you know, there's going to be a, uh, a, re- a resurrection, but we also believe that when uh, God brings about the, you know, this great tribulation, the end of what we have, that the people that are righteous per se, that they'll be found worthy to you know, be a mm-hmm. part of that. I but, think I but, think the whole point of Romans is that you're, it says that um, by realizing the holiness of God and God's righteous, holy standard, it says that every mouth may be shut before God, which kind of means, if you read the whole book of Romans, that not to think the way you're, what you're saying, because your mouth hasn't been shut before God in your own deadness and trespasses and sins. It says in Ephesians, we are dead in trespasses and mm-hmm. sins before we're made alive by the new birth, by regeneration, the Bible calls it. Now, I'm going to read that verse again because you didn't address mm-hmm. anything about it. You just said, well, I think, okay, this, the verse says, it's, it's so, so wonderful. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. So, what, how does You're that fit in with what you you said? Are you familiar with Judas? Yes. Okay. And what was his, his relationship with Jesus Christ? I well, mean, he was he a was, Jew under the law at that time. Mm-hmm. And, and Jesus called him the born. son of perdition, and Jesus even right. knew what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. So he's portrayed as a false believer because mm-hmm. he had been okay, stealing but, from but, them all along. So, again, right. this doesn't answer this verse, so how do you reconcile this? You think the well, life my, of Judas under the law is more comparable to a Christian than the epistles just, of John? Just, my, my, my feeling is my feeling. that... Per- you have to have uh, o- obedience uh-huh. all the way till death. Uh-huh. You never get to the point you can say, "I have, I'm, I'm automatic." You know, you, I'm locked in. How? You know, only so, what does this first mean? So what does it what mean? Yeah, you're, you're still not. You know, there's there's many verses that talk about that. There's no. There's therefore no condemnation to those who are in. Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. Romans mm-hmm. 5, 1 but says, you, Therefore, you, having been justified by faith, declared righteous, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to talk mm-hmm. about someone, you know, there is false faith. And I think there is apostatizing. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, some people say they were Christian and then become an atheist, you know. But it says that the first John 5 verse is in the context of those who have been born again and then indwelt with the Holy Spirit. It talks about that in Romans 8, too. So it's not talking about mm-hmm. false faith, but those who have come to the end of themselves, stop trying to, you know, be counted righteous through their works and cast their only hope on Christ and his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sins. That's what um, mm-hmm. Martin Luther called sola fide, faith alone. But, you know, it's genuine faith. It's not just, yeah, you know, Jesus existed or whatever. <laughs> so it's not that. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. that's a really interesting verse. And First John 5, 1 says, Everyone believing that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. How, how do you explain that in the Jehovah's Witness doctrine? About the special class. Well, there's two classes, and obviously, how how picked out or how them were selected, uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's something between God and or basically Jesus Christ and God as to the selection of these. So, well, I was uh, referring to how they say don't. the other class is not born again. This verse, First John five one, says everyone believing. That Jesus is the Christ mm-hmm. has been born from God. But it's not really hard to understand. What situation? No, I don't think so either. It, what the situation is, both groups have to have the relationship with God. It's just that it says born is, of God, born again. It says who everyone believing 
You can check it in your Bible, 1 John 5, 1. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, I have no problem with what you're saying. It doesn't change my understanding as to the fact that we have two groups that Jesus Christ clearly identified, and both of them have to come into relationship with God, but the relationship has to be continuing. They never get to the point they can say, I have made it. Uh, they may have faith, but... No their, Christian their faith... who understands grace would ever say, I have made it. They say, Christ I, has done all I, for me. And that's why it's described I, in the Bible as a gift. And Romans chapter 4 mm-hmm. contrasts that with the works. Because it talks about Abraham being justified before he did works. Mm-hmm. Now it says, now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, meaning like not as grace, but as what is due. So you did all this stuff, and you just deserve it. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Mm-hmm. Yes. That doesn't fit with anything that you're, you're saying, because you're talking about trying to be justified eventually through works. And I think from reading their material, I think the works also have to be related to the Watchtower organization. Just like Mormonism, you have to do these things, and they subtly invent this system that ties it into their organization. And that's what the two-class system did, which they came up with in 1935 with, with Rutherford. It wasn't even taught before that. 